Hi, my name is Musa, and I'm part of the content team at Amateur Photographer. And today I'm with Callum, and we're gonna have a nice discussion about the evolution of the camera that killed the DSLR. And that was the introduction of the Sony A7 and the A7R in 2013. Callum, you were around 10 years ago working at AP, um, and you remember most probably when the first full frame mirrorless camera came into being. How mm. was that? I asked Nigel what the uh, number one was, and it was uh, Miley Cyrus' Wrecking Ball. And it certainly <laughs> came in like a wrecking and ball and, and wrecked, well, I wouldn't say wrecked everything, I'd say made, made things better. Disrupted the market. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Weird landscape back then, 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, we had compact cameras, mm -hmm. which we all know has been gobbled up by smartphone market as it goes on. And those compact cameras kind of turned into mirrorless cameras. So you had these little tiny things and everyone was just trying to get smaller and smaller and smaller, but just so you could get a really nice lens on it. Well, Sony had their SLT range, yeah. which are these great big beasts that were kind of the <laughs> SLRs. And then Sony brought the, the mirrorless, to the full frame mirrorless. It was against the trend. Mm. Everybody was getting small sensors and they were getting slightly bigger. You had micro four thirds and Olympus Web were all in on micro four thirds and so did Panasonic. And then Sony was like, nah, full frame. And that's it. And got it, the A7. So you've got Sony trying to disrupt a market where Canon and Nikon are already dominating with the mm. DSLRs. So I guess their A7 was a, an experiment of sorts and it has worked. I mean, we're sitting here 10 years later watching this evolution of the mirrorless cameras. You've got to admire the, uh, you know, the product engineer that said, look, I know we're making these cameras <laughs> that are really good and we've bought Minolta and it's yeah. cost us a lot of money, yeah. but how about we make the same camera but smaller and completely cannibalize the sales of our cameras already? It really and, must and have they taken. Did it. But I only got to use this in 2021. So this is like, almost 10 years later, but it's still the first camera I actually bought and started using when I started using the Sony range. So you came into Sony? Using the A7R, yeah. A7R, yeah. and what, what did you find? My first sort of introduction to Sony was the A7S II at work. Um, and I sort of enjoyed being a hybrid shooter where you do photography and video, having mm. a camera that did both. Previously I'd used a Canon 7 and it's great for photos, but not so much for video. <laughs> so to find that camera that did both, I was like, oh, let me invest in a Sony. And I could only afford at that time a Sony A7R. Didn't have in-body stabilization, but you know, stay still enough, put it on a tripod, works. Great photos. Yeah. And to be honest, those are the photos that have actually been published. So I'm like, you know, it's, it's a great body. And it, it was completely different having moved from a DSLR into a full frame. Um, Miller, mirrorless camera, <laughs> yeah. Each different version feels like it's a tiny, tiny incremental upgrade. It does. But if you go back from an A7 all the way to an A7 IV, huge change. Focusing speed, yeah. the menu's completely different. Yeah. They're such wildly different cameras in 10 years, but it's taken tiny, tiny little changes to get to, to a point where they are today. And you know, as Andy pointed out the other day, tiny, tiny changes, but they still almost look the same. <laughs> I think um, I, I made the point that Sony found a formula that works in terms of their design style. And if it's if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Um, yeah. it's, it's a really good, and it makes it easy for anyone moving from one body to the next to use because all you're adjusting to mostly is new menu and new technology, but it's the same sort of feel and, and grip, yeah. Different grip, <laughs> very different grip. But just, just when you see, I remember in the early days, um, Richard Sibley creating uh, grips out of Sugaru and putting them on this camera because it was a bit hard to hold. Mm -hmm. And now we, we don't have to make them out of Sugaru because they're quite big. The whole point of the mirrorless is that they were smaller than the DSLRs. And if I you mean, look at the cameras, size that was <laughs> that and a little, 35 mil lens. That yeah. was quite a nice little compact system. Uh, arguably, did they keep up with the uh, smaller than the DSLR? Not really. Yeah, not really. Um, they basically just made a mirrorless DS DSLR. What would have held me back from buying an A7? Not particularly fast AF. It yeah. was a little bit slow. Um, 
viewfinders weren't particularly good on the A7s. They were like the refresh rate, just all technology, all viewfinders of that time. Mm. Um, I remember having a Leica camera that had a quite a, a significantly more advanced viewfinder than the others. And I was like, if this comes onto a, well, it has now. If this comes onto a camera <laughs> like that, this is going to be a game changer. Yeah. But um, in the dark, being really hard to like focus and then manual focusing not being particularly good because you couldn't properly see not high enough resolution viewfinders. Mm. The colour science in the early ones, not very good. Not great. Um, <laughs> skin tone rendition, not... Mm, not your forte. <laughs> just a little bit weird. Oh, what else was annoying? Oh, this is quite good. It's like a therapy session. Uh, lens lineup, that's a good one. Yeah. Not particularly good lens lineup. I remember probably by the time we got to like a third generation, we finally got like those lenses that pros use, mm -hmm. the 2470, 2.8, 7200, 2.8, those sort of staple lenses. Lenses, yeah. It took a while to get there. Now that you've brought up lenses, one thing I do love about using Sony body is that you've got a lot more options in using even third party lenses with the body. That's something that's very limiting when you use mm. other brands. So one of the reasons I actually went to Sony mm. over other brands, they will not be named, <laughs> It's because the lens mount isn't open to everyone. Mm. So I can go and buy myself a Sigma lens, like, you know, a 50 mil, and spend 600 quid on a really competent, nice 50 After mil lens. After having invested in a really expensive body. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. 600 quid, not that much. Second hand yeah. market, got loads of lenses, brilliant. I'd rather have five pretty decent lenses that I probably won't even notice the difference in sharpness than have two okay lenses that don't do everything I want them to do. I shoot weddings, right? And it's so, when you're in the moment, obviously relying on a camera that's got really good autofocus, um, that gets that sharp image in that moment is great. But you become lazy because yeah, you, you know you can lazy. press the shutter and you're gonna get that shot. You only right. notice it in the edit. Right? When you're like, yeah. oh, you? I shot 270 yeah. of them, just them kissing? Exactly. Yeah. So it's, it's very easy to get caught up with just pressing the shutter and going. Whereas when I used my A7R, I had to slow down and think about my composition. I had to make sure all my settings were perfect because I knew I didn't have like 15 of those photos to then choose the perfect one from. I didn't have the best photo option, so I had to like be intentional. And I think I'm trying to get back into that creative mode where you have to be like fully in the moment and be present and not just rely on your camera to do the work, which is, it's so easy to get into that mode, especially if you're just shooting on the go. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm actually thinking Going back to my A7R, just for portraits though, because um, I, I quite like it. And so I don't hate the camera. <laughs> and you're happy to deal with the menu system? I am. There's something, the, the, the challenge, the time that it takes for me to get back and be like, mm, I feel that bond. I'm like, I hate you, but I love you too. Yeah. <laughs> I guess. Yeah. I think that's What's been your Stockholm experience? syndrome, I think that's like, <laughs> being Maybe. a lover of your capture. <laughs> um, the A7 was great. I remember sitting there and looking at the menus and trying to review one and looking at the stuff like, there was things like AF illumination. They put everything in there. Left it was side just, uh... or something like that. And you were like, I don't even know what AF <laughs> illumination left side, I don't even know what that is. Yeah. And you go in to try and clarify what that was. And it would have like settings like one, two, three, four, five snooze off <laughs> timer. You're like, huh? Yeah. And there was just so many complicated things, which thankfully they have now simplified quite significantly. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's, it's, it's come along so far um, until we've got probably one of the best selling cameras ever in the A7 IV. In the A7 IV, yeah. Well, it's the A7 R4, but again, they all look the same. So Callum, if we look at the range of the Sony full frame cameras over the years, you've got different iterations. You've got the A7 line. So you've got your A7, A7 II, A7 III, A7 IV, and then you've got your A7Rs. Rs. <laughs> yeah. And then you've got your S's. Yeah. And then you have your C's. Slightly more recently the C's, yeah. Okay, so um, let's break it down to what do the different letters at the end of each? It's definitely thing? confusing, especially yeah. if you're 
you know, not just coming into the range. The A7s are kind of, I want to say middle of the road, but they're like your all-rounder, we do everything, don't have a speciality as such, but do everything pretty damn well. Yeah. So the A7C is designed to be a more compact version, mm. um, the same as their A7 counterparts, whether it's the C or the C Mark II, which we reviewed the other day. Mm. Um, smaller viewfinder, yep. uh, slightly more compact body, um, no joystick on the back, which I find incredibly annoying, <laughs> um, and just a little bit more simplified. Yeah. Some people will really like that. That is good for you know, someone who's got a lot of A7 lenses already, wants something slightly smaller for travel, perhaps. And then for the people, I mean, one of the things we haven't really covered is the fact that the A7 started a bit of a video revolution as well. True. Suddenly, photographers. And maybe inspired your, okay. your content creators and yeah. your cinematographers. The amount of people that probably got into video mm -hmm. and are now like high-end video producers, thanks to having this red button on their A7s, is probably quite plentiful. Yeah. Um, and of course, those people wanted a native video camera that camera. they could shoot video on. Mm. So they came out with the A7S, which was a little bit confusing when they first brought it out because it had 12 megapixel sensor. Mm. Kind of made it not great for anything. Well, apart from video. Mm. So it kind of made it not particularly good stills camera. Mm -hmm. um, I suppose 12 megapixels, not too bad if you just upload into the gram. Professional work, maybe not so much. Okay. But um, incredible video camera. Yeah. And you can, have you, have you used? I've, I've tried the A7S 2 for video and it's, it's really good. I mean, you're shooting at 4K, so mm. you, you've got that option. Yeah, I've tried that. And low time. light. Yeah. yeah. Just ridiculous. You can crank that ISO up and it just... It just eats the noise and makes spits out really nice, clean video. It is yeah. just, yeah, so good. Great. And that leaves the A7R range. Of course, we've got the <laughs> A7R, which is like your, I'd say the A7R is like the perfect camera if you're a studio photographer or mm. landscape photographer that wants to make big prints. It's that mm. resolution hungry photographer. Um, and there are quite a lot of people out there that like it. At this point, possibly the pixels are getting so much that you're filling hard drives left, right and centre. So unless you really need it, the a 7 IV is probably the better the camera balance. for most. Just such a but good We camera. could be biased because that is the camera we both use, so yeah. you never know. Testament to the Sony range that having the ability to use pretty much any camera we can. Yeah, because they've maintained. Both. Oh, a seven Sony. Fours. <laughs> yeah. That should tell you something. And what are we filming on today? Sony A7 IV. A7 so, IVs. Say Sony A7 being the camera that killed the DSLR. Um, people have always wondered what we mean when we say that, because I know we've written an article about that, but you know, what does it mean that it actually killed the DSLR? The introduction of um, contrast detection and phase detection AF points on the yeah. sensor. Yeah. That was huge. Even okay. the early A7s mm -hmm. actually are more competent at autofocusing than like professional DSLRs of 10 years ago. Yeah, and because Sony sort of came in early into the market with the A7, they, they set the trend and it took Nikon and other brands reluctantly, reluctantly. <laughs> they dragged it off for years. Screaming. Um, Canon and Nikon only introduced their full frame mirrorless cameras in 2018. And that's a whole five years after Sony has. So, you know, they've come in, they've not pushing their mirrorless, which has meant that they've stopped, you know, the production of their DSLRs. So that's, that's why when we talk about the Sony A7 being the camera that killed the DSLR, it did push that, that camera out of the market. It started the, it started the, the trend. revolution. <laughs> Full frame mirrorless. Yeah. And don't forget, there's also been lots of challenges that have tried to go full frame, not big enough, we'll go mm. even bigger sensor. But really, the professionals, most people, full frame, plenty big enough, as long as it's quick, takes nice images, the colours look good, and it's not horrible to use, that's the camera they're going to choose. Oh, and that's amazing. it. 
Well, thank you so much, Callum. Um, I fully enjoyed this delving into 10 years of cameras. But yeah, we're going to head out and try some photos now with some of these cameras. I'm definitely going with the A7R, um, as slow as it is. <laughs> so thank you so much for watching. Please do tell us in the comments below what your favorite Sony camera has been over the last couple of years and anything else that came up from this discussion. We hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching. Please comment, like, subscribe and we'll see you in the next video.